Kelly, this is David. Uh, we are from Portland, Oregon. This is our home uh, for the next three months, the Narwagon. So this is the inside of our van, the Narwagon. Uh, it's a Winnebago Revel. So the Winnebago Revel is one of the first 4x4 vehicles really intended for uh, more rugged travel. We were like the short wheelbase. Um, we knew we were going to be in cities a lot when we were traveling. And so it was kind of quickly I, we identified it as a really good fit for what we wanted to do. Um, and we'd done a lot of brainstorming ourselves on layouts because we'd hatched this dream of like, oh, maybe we should build out a van ourselves. And then kind of quickly realized we didn't want to take a year off to build the van and then the 15 months of travel. We just wanted to be able to travel. So um, as my mom says, we pushed the easy button and realized it made a lot of sense to just buy a van. Um, so to give a little bit of a kind of overall view of the van in the front, we have the two seats and they're both captain's chairs. So they both swivel around, um, which most commonly we do with the driver's seat so that when you swivel the driver's seat around and you have the bench seat back here. Um, so having this bench seat is super handy. Um, most of the things in the van are how they came. We just made a couple modifications mostly to personalize things. So like I made this cover for the bench seat um, just to protect the cushions and also to make it feel a little more homey and we added some cushions. Um, added the art throughout which most of it's mine. A couple pieces like this are things that we've acquired along the way. Um, something we really like about the van, which maybe is really simple, but are the windows. So there's the screen mode and then like the totally open mode, which when the windows are closed, we have it in and then the night mode. Um, and this mostly keeps out the light and mostly keeps light from inside the van from being seen outside. There are little holes. So we actually made some blackout curtain covers that go over these. So if we're trying to be really stealthy in our where we're camping, we'll put those up. But most of the time we just leave it like this. The table is super nifty. I think how it's designed because it's really tucked away. So it doesn't feel like it's in the way um, at all. The only problem is if we're ever trying to jam like bags back here, then if you put anything down here, you have to like move it all the way back to pull the table all the way out. So, uh, but for the most part, the uh, table is really out of the way. And you, when you pull it up and open it out, uh, it expands to give you easily enough room for two people to eat on. Um, but we do have storage up here in this cabinet um, and all of the cabinets work with this system, which I think is, is pretty handy um, where whatever it's down, it's locked and then you can open it up. So most of the cabinet space is all food and food related storage. Um, so up here we have of, um, kind of our Tetris of food storage and um, I think it one of the advantages of having the 15 months of traveling and now this three months of traveling is we really learned a lot during our 15 months that we're now uh, had the benefit of having learned from so we didn't have this toaster in our first 15 months of traveling and this little toaster has been a game changer So David and I met about 10 years ago um, when I was living in Portland, Oregon, and he was living in Boston, Massachusetts. We met through a mutual friend, and um, as she predicted, uh, we were soulmates and hit it off pretty quickly, um, but because we were in different parts of the country, really the only option was long distance dating. So um, we dated long distance for about two years, and during that time is really when the dream of uh, taking time off to explore the country, I would say, was born. I still have letters and things that we wrote to each other talking about when we have the truck camp because it was always a truck camper early on that we thought we would have mostly because we knew we didn't want to tow anything um, and that we wanted something pretty small we knew we'd want to be doing a lot of hiking and camping and backpacking so we wanted something pretty rugged and so that kind of dream hatched a long time ago and it was a fun thing to talk about and to dream about especially when we were in different parts of the country after we both lived in Portland David moved to Portland um, after we'd been dating a couple of years ago we both had full-time jobs um, I'm a civil engineer uh, David worked for um, a a software company so we both had pretty standard work hours um, we did a lot of weekend backpacking trips and tried to get out as much as we could um, but definitely both felt 
kind of the, the grind of the office life and really wanting some time to explore. So initially we were gonna take a year off. That was kind of what we had talked about and planned for, but as the trip got closer, um, we realized there was so much we wanted to do in the summer, we couldn't fit it into one summer. We really wanted to go to Alaska, for example, but that was gonna take a whole summer in itself. So my dad, who previously tried to convince us we should only take three months off, was like, well, why don't you just do two summers? Maybe you should take 15 months. Hopefully we'll only continue to grow, probably mostly in the form of week-long trips or month trips, kind of from here on out. So this is the kitchen of the van. Um, we've been pretty happy with the kitchen. Uh, we do most of our meals in the van when we're on the road. We definitely eat out some. It's nice to check out local restaurants. So we have a couple extra things not in the kitchen that we, we pull out that are back here in a bin. Um, the Nutribullet, and then we also have a instant pot that we bring on the road. Um, we have a sink that is uh, underneath this cover here. Um, relatively small, but big enough to get dishes done. Um, the only time I really struggle is trying to like wash my face in the sink and not get water everywhere, but works okay. Um, one of my favorite personal touches is thanks to my sister. We have this handy little spice rack back here and she made us these customized labels for the, for the Narwagon. She had recently acquired a Cricut for printing labels and cards and got really excited about it. So it was, it was a really sweet touch. Um, and then we have a fridge down here, which um, I love for the fridge to be bigger. And I'd say this is probably one of our limiting factors when it comes to how far, how long can we be uh, outside of a city for or outside of any towns. And then we have a couple drawers here and again, uh, an overhead uh, cabinet storage and then some pantry storage here. Um, all the drawers work on the same system as the cabinet space over there where um, it pops out. And again, most of these are, are holding food. And then another thing that is in super handy kind of in this area is we have a fan um, and it's really powerful. So it really pulls air through the, fa uh, through the van. So at night, we'll open the window in the back. If we're having dinner, we'll open the window by the dining area and just have that one window open so you can like really feel the breeze being sucked out. Um, and it also learned how valuable it uh, is today when at lunchtime I burned a piece of toast in the toaster oven because the toaster oven is really fast and we had our um, smoke detector go off for the first time and once we turned the fan on that like really quickly cleared the smoke out so uh, that was super handy. So this is the bathroom that we have in the van. Um, having a bathroom was definitely critical when we were planning to travel in the van full time. We have what's called a web bath. So we have a shower that's in the same space as the toilet. So we have a cassette toilet, um, which has actually been super handy. Um, we've seen a lot of different types of toilet systems as we've talked to different people in vans and we're really happy with the cassette toilet um, because it's actually emptied from the exterior part of the van and it just looks like a little suitcase. So you can empty it at a dump station, but um, you can also empty it just in a toilet, um, which we'll, we'll do when we're at home, um, albeit maybe a little gross. Um, or if we're at a, like in a campground and there's um, a pit toilet. Um, and then we also have a shower. So there is a, a hose and a head that hooks up to a faucet on the side of the shower. That same hose and head hooks up to another faucet on the back of the van so we can shower inside the van or outside. Um, we definitely use our outside shower quite often, especially in nicer weather. Uh, so this is the bedroom in the Revel. Um, the bed, we actually sleep long ways, which is um, kind of unusual. Um, it's the only way you can really fit a bed in the short wheelbase. And there's bump outs on the side of the van, which you can see from the exterior. So that gives you a little bit of extra length. Um, the bed is definitely cozy when it comes to width wise. It's somewhere between a twin and a full size bed. I think it's a little closer to twin than a full size because the bed doesn't quite go to the back of the van. There's a little bit of a gap. So it goes goes nearly to the back of the van. Um, so for, for two people, it's certainly cozy, um, but it's very doable. Uh, we have a king bed at home, but we adjusted pretty quickly to the smaller bed. Um, and we have reading lights on the side, which are super handy, as well as there's um, USB outlets. So we put some magnets in on the side so that we can have our phones plugged in and mounted to the wall, which is handy because there's nowhere to really put anything down when you're in the bed. I really value a nightstand at home to be able to have like hang up my glass, put my glasses or uh, drink a water and a book. So I have a little hook for my glasses, which is handy. And then the wall mount for the phone, um, which is, is useful.
with all the recovery gear and the 4x4 and a sometimes overconfident driver, uh, we definitely seek out spots that are um, pretty far off uh, and take advantage of the fact that we can get really out in, into the middle of nowhere. Um, and so yeah, that's definitely whenever we're figuring out places to camp, even if we're um, well, one place comes to mind when we did the Blue Ridge Parkway, when we were going through North Carolina, um, we could have like boondocked at a Walmart or in some place that was directly on the route, but instead we went seven or eight miles up this pretty gnarly forest road where we had certain patch passes of the road where we thought we were going to have to turn around, but the, the end goal was this amazing lookout. Um, and it was, well, in my mind, it was very worth doing it. Um, it's, it's not something that we always do, but it's nice every so often to just get totally out into the middle of nowhere where you know that there's pretty much no chance that anybody is gonna be driving past you. And I would guess that probably four out of the seven nights were in a nature camp spot. Those are the, definitely the nicest where we can just don't have to worry about having windows up um, where there aren't other people around. We can really freely um, go in and out of the van and set up chairs outside and there's nice view, it's quiet. So those are definitely the places that we um, seek out. And it's nice having a van that we can be away from a city for several days where we don't need to uh, get water, empty the tanks, and, and carry a lot of food, so. Yeah, so on the road, we we mentioned that we have left our, we basically put our careers on pause, um, but we sort of have picked up some stuff that we do on the side. Um, I'm really into photography, Kelly's really into writing, which actually lends itself really well to writing about traveling in the van. I don't know exactly how many, there's probably six to eight articles that we've written for Winnebago. So we've developed a relationship with some folks at Winnebago. Winnebago operates kind of an online magazine that we've written articles for. So most of the time we'll suggest a list of prompts and they'll pick something and we'll get in the rotation every so often. We've also developed a relationship with a couple of people at Backwoods Adventure Vods, just kind of coincidentally, of course I'm, we I'm, of course I'm wearing their shirt because I have two shirts um, from Backwoods with me and only a couple shirts in the van. So um, most of the time I'm representing them. Um, it's a good shirt. Uh, so David just doing a lot of research in the front bumper, um, came across the backwards bumper, thought it was a really good fit. And that kind of started this relationship that has been several uh, like van expos. Um, we are specifically more often David have gone and been at the backwards booth and we got to tour their factory whenever we were going through Arkansas and just um, really like a lot of the folks there and feel like it's a good company. So we um, we send them photos and things to use on their uh, on their social media and on their website. And then we, just this summer, we're gonna start writing some articles for the Adventure Portal. So through Backwoods kind of got connected to that online magazine and um, are excited to be writing a couple articles this summer about our travels in Alaska. And then we also write, um, or I primarily write, and David supplies a lot of the photographs for a personal blog, um, which is gnrwgn.com as well. All right, so we're at the back of the van. Um, before I show you the garage area, um, one of the things that we did before this trip was we added um, some new sweet stuff from Backwoods Adventure Mods. So we already had their front bumper um, and we decided to go with their rear bumper and a side lighter, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, but the rear bumper, um, for me, it was mostly for aesthetics, but it does have some functional purposes. Um, for one, we've got these two light pods in the back. And the, finally, um, because our van is a 4x4 van and then we have oversized tires, it's definitely a bit of a step up to get into the van if we're trying to grab something out of the bed. Um, so it's nice that we have this extra step here. So no more stepping on the hitch, which I've done a few times. Um, so yeah. Why don't we check out the garage? So we've gone through a few iterations of garage storage. Um, currently we've got a bunch of smaller bins, which so far I'm really liking. Um, so the bed is on the lift. Um, and so during the day, for the most part, we have the bed up in the air. So you can sort of get an idea of how much room that would give you to access the storage. Um, so we have, we've actually found that it's pretty easy to get to the storage with the bed down. 
Um, but it's definitely helpful to be able to put the bed up if you want to be able to reach some of the bins that are further back. All right, so here's the front of the van. Um, this is good. We didn't we didn't clean it up at all for the video, so you can see it the way it normally looks when we're on the road, um, nice and dirty. Um, so this is our Backwoods Adventure Mods bumper on the front. We've got uh, yellow fogs, which are really awesome in the winter, um, just because the white light tends to sort of give you like the Star Wars effect with the snow, and which is pretty mesmerizing when you're driving at night. So it's nice to have the yellow light, which doesn't give you as much glare off of the snowfall. Um, and, and those are street legal, so I'll run them all the time. And then inner pods are uh, off-road lights. And then we've got this sweet light bar. D-rings on the front for pulling other people or getting pulled. Um, and then we've got a 12,000 pound winch in the front. Um, sort of behind this area. All right, so up on the roof, um, bit of a funny story. There's a lot of stuff going on and it's really the only reason why there's so much that I've changed up on the roof or that we've changed up on the roof is because we really wanted to have our skis out of the exterior of the van. Um, and then in the back, which um, you'll see in the flyover shot, um, we've got two recovery tracks and a shovel and then the Wii Boost this is also mounted to the same mount that's got the recovery tracks on it. We always tell whenever we meet people on the road they're like how do you guys how do you guys manage to get along in such a small space but we always say that uh, we get along better in, what is this, 57 square feet or whatever it is, than, uh, than we did at home in a 3,000 square foot house. <laughs> because we're spending so much time together, we sort of uh, understand each other a little bit better and know like who needs like time to do their own thing or like what we enjoy doing as far as planning activities. Like we want to stay uh, active and do like a certain number of hikes um, and make sure that we're sort of maximizing our time. But basically like spending all this time together sort of helped us sort of understand each other better um, and that's made us get along a lot better I think. So yeah thanks for stopping by and checking out the van. Um, we we really love our van as you can tell and um, I think one of especially David's favorite things is whenever we're stopped at a gas station or at a restaurant and someone says oh hey can I see inside your van and we're elated to open the doors and show them around so I'm always happy to have the chance to, to show people inside so if you see us on the road anywhere you recognize the license plate uh, feel free to flag us down or catch us at a, a gas station and we'd love to show you around more. Thank you.